Okay, so the goal here, I got this new radio. This is the Yezu FT DX10. And my goal when I first got it was to get up N1MM software to be able to participate in a contest. And I found out it was kind of painful to get this up and running. So hopefully I can help you out with this video. This video will be separated into chapters in case you want to skip around. And hopefully this can save you a weekend because it cost me a weekend because there were some things I did not understand. Okay, so we're gonna get N1MM to work. And once you get that to work, it should be just as easy to get that to work as maybe a Ham Radio Deluxe, which I also got to work this weekend. But you have to understand some basic things. And here's my disclaimer, I am by no means an expert. I just got it to work. I'll just put it that way. I don't know a lot about what these, these settings are. I know there are protocols for talking from the radio to the computer, but I don't completely understand what the difference between RTS and DTR are and so forth. All I know is they just need to match. And all you need to know is what you need to know. So let's get this up and running. First of all, all I have is a USB cable from this to a Windows 10 computer. So only one cable, USB in the back here, and then USB to the computer. Windows 10, I just did a fresh install. Okay, so I, that just messed everything up. Anyway, we're gonna start from the beginning. We're gonna start from the beginning and I'm gonna do a complete reset because I don't have anything saved anyway. So I'm gonna go here, click on the function button. By the way, this should work for most radios or most Yezus. I will say once you, in, in doing this, I was able to look at some of the ICOM instructions and it actually kind of made sense and I made prog progress that way as well. So let's do a full reset. Go to extension settings. I'm gonna reset my entire computer, my entire radio back to defaults. Okay, this is to show you that there's nothing up my sleeve and when this is not a review, so I'm not gonna talk about that. So we're gonna go into CW settings and we're gonna go hit enter. We're gonna go down here to PC King. Now I found that the DTR works. Now might, you might be able to use RTS and like I said, I don't know what those mean exactly. But this is one of the major settings you have to do if you wanna do CW King on N1MM and Ham Radio Deluxe or their tool DM780 and things like that. So this is set up. And if you want to look around in the general tab here, notice that our, in the general operation settings, notice that our cat rate is 38.4. And we're gonna leave that as default and do as little as possible. So just remember that number 38.4 and that will also save you a lot of time. Cat RTS, we'll leave that on. Everything else the same. Let's go back. Now we can come in here and change our, since I did a reset, I'm gonna change that to my call sign and so forth, but we're pretty much done here on the radio. Also, you're going to want to mess around with your delay times. That's how long the radio stays keyed until after you stop sending. So if you are sending CW and you're slow, the radio will stop keying and you'll hear it clicking on and off, on and off. So. You can set that with in CW under the brake delay and read the instructions about that. That will be important. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is if you go to Yezu, whatever radio you have, the FTDX10 here is what I've got. I found, of course, you start the description, you go over here to files. At first, I would just thought there was a catalog, but there's actually a lot more information out here. And the CAT Operation Reference Book helped me out a lot. So know that there might be a CAT operation book for the Yezu, and that will get you over the hump if you're having troubles. Also, so the first thing we want to do is I also discovered that there is a USB driver here. I'm not sure if you actually need it or not, but I would install it anyway. So go here and install any USB drivers for your radio and just 
Maybe it will help, maybe it doesn't. Uh, in the middle of me trying to get this to work, I discovered that there was a driver and it didn't seem to change my COM ports or anything, but I installed it and it was working after that. So, okay, and now I found this cat operation reference book and this really enlightened me. And when I open that, we get a lot more information. So, and a very important key to all of this is here's the USB cable. That's all I have. I just have this one cable from the radio to the computer. You turn the transceiver on, you connect it to the PC, and then you open the device manager in Windows. And to do that, you can just type in device manager, and you, you can just open it like that. And then once you plug in your radio, you should see, and you've installed those drivers, you should see two, not one, COM ports for this radio. There's an enhanced COM port and a, a standard COM port. Now this really threw me off at first because I thought there was just one. I thought maybe the other one was for advanced features or something, but what I learned here is that these two are very important. When I was messing around with this, I got the, the, the controls. There's two different things. There's controlling the radio and then there's transmitting the radio. And they've separated these onto two different ports. So when I got the, and I didn't know that, so when I got this working, I was on this one port and I'm like, well, it's working, you know, the, the controls are working. I can change the frequencies. I can see the frequencies. So, and then what I didn't realize is that there's a sep that separate port, which happens to be exactly the same here on COM5 and COM6. It'll be like be different on your radio, so you'll have to go go to device manager and make sure. But mine was COM5 and COM6. The enhances for controlling the rig, the frequency and, and the frequencies and the that's where your ham radio deluxe comes in. That's where you can change frequencies, change controls, all kinds of stuff. It's not transmitting. The other port is where you transmit the PTT control and all that stuff. And that once I got that working then it all works. So you're going to find your two comp ports here. They might be five and six. They may not be, but you need to note that. So now if we, I happen to have this up and running now, and I'll show you in a second. I've got my radio on and it's up and running and I'm going to show you my settings, which is, I wish someone would have showed me this the day I got the radio instead of me having to figure it out. So you'll know you're connected to your radio, the rig control, if you've got this frequency up here right if it sees your frequency and I'm turning the radio dial and you see it's changing then your radio is connected and but if you click on some of these like QRL and these should send CW but if they they're not sending CW then you're not connected to the transmission portion so there's two parts to this we're gonna go into after you've installed I'm not doing an install video on in one mm but after you've installed this put all your stuff in and you've got your USB connection, one wire. We click here. So notice we've got our COM5 and COM6. And so the rig control is COM5. And in this case, I was very happy to see when I downloaded that there was a setting for my, my brand new FTDX10. Very good. So we're not going to do the CW click on here. We're going to do it on the transmission part. And you know, this may, these settings may not be perfect, but like I said, they work. So if you remember in the radio, we were at 38,400 parity N, 8, 2, most of these were default. But on the, and I'm not sure you need this on, on the COM5 part, but you will need it on the COM6 part. So I, it's working, I'm just going to leave it alone. So I happen to know if I, as I was playing around, if you change the stop bits to 1, it will stop working, it will stop connecting to your radio, <laughs> but that's, that's good to know. But Here's my settings, use these, they work, and let's move on to COM6. So this is the actual transmit control, and in this case you will not, you cannot pick a radio here, because if you pick the same one it'll say, hey, which one are you talking about? So here we're just doing CW and other, and then the settings on COM6 would be, remember we were DTR. In your, in your case it might be different, but here we're at DTR, I pick CW, and then push to talk, Again, this may not be required, it may be all off or whatever, but it's working, so I'm going to leave it alone. And I hit OK. And now, what should happen, once that's set up, you, you should be able to see your frequencies here. And then, if we transmit, I'm going to go to a frequency that's not in use. 
and I'm just going to ask if the frequency is in use. Okay, I'm on very low power. I'm on like five watts, the lowest this will go. So it sounds like there's someone there. Anyway, you should, if you click on this and the radio keys up and doesn't transmit, then it's not working. For a while there, that's what was happening to me. The radio would key, but it would be silent. So that's how you know it's not working. You should hear CW just like that, just like I just showed you. All right, guys, let me know if that's good enough, if that helps you. Uh, comment below and like, subscribe, all that crap. Uh, thanks.